and a heartfelt aloha to some very distinguished guests here today, including Governor Ige, Governor Ariyoshi, Mayor Caldwell, Judge Kubo, Consul General Shigeda of Japan, General Bramlett, and Paul Nakasone, uh, who just popped on the Army two-star list yesterday. Congratulations, Paul. And a shout out to your dad, uh, Bud uh, Nakasone, who's an MIS veteran and retired Army Colonel. Bud's visiting from Minnesota, where his Kibishi Fuyu for sure are a very harsh uh, winter. So we're glad you're here in Hawaii, Colonel. And of course, uh, to General Ishimoto and all of the military intelligence service warriors of World War II whom we honor here today. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, former Vice President Hubert Humphrey was known for his very long speeches. His wife Muriel once told him, Hubert, for his speech to be immortal, it doesn't have to be eternal. <laughs> so, so with that in mind, I promise to keep my remarks somewhere to the left of eternal today. So ladies and gentlemen, our battles, our victories, indeed our very way of life are owed not to great moments or important dates. They are owed to the actions and sacrifices of individual men and women who were willing to step into the breach for their country and for the cause of freedom. America is a country she is because of her heroes past and present. Heroes like those we honor here today, the men and women of the Military Intelligence Service, the MIS, who were instrumental in securing victory in World War II. It's those of this, the greatest generation who donned the cloth of our nation to serve in our armed forces at the world's darkest hour, who can take pride in knowing that they shaped the world that we live in today. Now, I've often been asked what's important, what's the most important event in my life. And honestly, without any doubt, it's World War II. Now, before anyone pulls out a calculator to try to do the math, no, I wasn't born then. I was born in the 1950s. But my father and four of his brothers fought in that war, enlisted men in the Navy and in the Army. So I was hearing their sea stories and foxhole stories from the moment that I could form a memory to the day they died. Through them, I learned of the tremendous cost and sacrifice of yours, the greatest generation. And those who fought for victory helped achieve nothing less than the survival of the free world. Through them, I was inspired to serve. And it's no exaggeration for me to say that the world we live in today was born of your achievements. And it's no exaggeration when I say that for me to be where I am today, a Japanese-American four-star admiral and commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, that's because of trailblazers like the men and women of the MIS and the 100th Infantry Battalion, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, and the 13th 99th Engineer Construction Battalion. I stand on the shoulder of giants. I'm humbled to be in your presence and thankful to play such a small part in your uh, national reunion today. As I thought about what I would say here, I reflected on what heroism means, and I came upon something that Lieutenant Stephen Decatur, one of our Navy's and our nation's greatest heroes, said in 1804, when he led a small band of hand-picked volunteers in the Tripoli Harbor to burn the captured frigate Philadelphia, Libya 1.0. On the eve of this raid, which was later called the most daring act of the age, he rallied his warriors with these words. We are now about to embark upon an expedition which may terminate in our sudden deaths or immortal glory. Sudden death or immortal glory, that was the environment that those who served our nation during World War II were thrust into as they went to war to protect our nation and defend our freedom. Sudden death or immortal glory, thousands of German and Austrian Americans and immigrants served in the MIS and the European theater of war. Because they were trained at Camp Ritchie, they were called the Ritchie Boys. And on this side of the world, Nearly 6,000 Japanese Americans boldly stepped forward to join the military intelligence service to serve in the Pacific Theater. These brave souls obtained actionable intelligence from the front lines, giving us an edge on the battlefield, while still others served in clandestine units behind enemy lines, engaged in hit-and-run operations, living with the guerrillas, operating with them as they would, uh, as they would, they would ambush the enemy, blowing up bridges and railroad tracks. Sudden death or immortal glory. MIS joined the fight in New Guinea, 
and in the Philippines, and like Dick Hamada, in China, in Burma, and India. In the Pacific, MIS participated in every major battle against Imperial Japanese forces, and time and time again, they proved their mettle. MIS language teams were sent in the action in the, in the Aleutians and Guadalcanal, and commanders quickly learned that the knowledge that the Nisei warriors had of the enemy's language, of their culture, and of their behavior gave them a distinct advantage in combat. George Blunder, the commanding officer of the Southeast Asia Translator and in Interrogation Center, once said that each of them was worth a company of infantry. Many Allied soldiers returned safely to their homes because the Nisei lighted the darkness in front of them by interrogating prisoners and translating documents. Here in Hawaii, MIS did similar work where they translated documents and prepared for deployments to Tarawa and Saipan and Iwo Jima and Okinawa and many other Pacific Island battlefields. Some were preparing for a possible invasion of the Japanese homeland. Sudden death or immortal glory. On Saipan, Huichi Kubo earned the Distinguished Service Cross for entering a cave unarmed to talk a group of Imperial Japanese soldiers into freeing more than 100 civilians they were threatening to kill. And on Okinawa, Herbert Yanomura convinced hundreds of local residents to evacuate their village before it was leveled by an artillery barrage. By the end of the war, Japanese Americans were just about everywhere, including MIS warrior Don Akubo, who negotiated the surrender of, of Imperial Japanese garrisons across the Pacific. And Jiro Yukimura, who's here today, was on board the USS Missouri when, that, when the surrender documents were signed there on September 2nd, 1945. And I just met his daughter, uh, the former mayor of Kauai. Great to meet you, ma'am. With the war's end, thousands of MIS, including many of you here today, along with a contingent of women Army Corps volunteers, converged on Japan to play a, clu a crucial role in forging peace. As cultural ambassadors, the MIS were a vital bridge between two nations that had just spent four years locked in a savage war. Whether it was translating for General MacArthur's meetings with the emperor or teaching Japanese workers how to use a Western Benjo, Nisei were on the forefront of building trust to replace that hatred. MacArthur once said, the Japanese people since the war have undergone the greatest transformation recorded in modern history. Today, Japan has the world's third largest economy. Today, Japan is one of our staunchest allies and closest trading partners. Today, the United States military is forward deployed in Japan working closely with the Japan Self-Defense Forces to maintain security, peace, and prosperity in that region. Today, a once bitter enemy is now our closest friend. Ours is a true great power relationship, and that's a legacy of which those who served in the MIS should be proud. Seneca once said that fire is the test of gold and adversity is the test of men. Not only were the men and women of the MIS tested on the battlefront, they were tested on the home front, where their loyalty to our nation was suspect. Yet they proved time and time again that their dedication and devotion to America was without limit. When Japanese Americans went to war, they left a segregated nation to fight and defend America's freedom with no guarantees that their own freedom would be defended in return. Now I've heard it said that the three great levelers are discipline, time, and patience. Great nations have been made greater often by the hands of men and women of diversity who stood out as an example of an ideal, resolutely working to affect change. The Japanese American, Americans of yours, the greatest generation, used all three of these levelers to affect great change in our nation. And the stellar wartime record of Japanese Americans helped trigger the desegregation of the military not long after the war. My predecessor, Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz, once said, before World War II, I entertained some doubt as to the loyalty of American citizens of Japanese ancestry in the event of war with Japan. From my observations during World War II, I no longer have that doubt, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come so far. We're still making great strides, and there's work to be done. For decades after the war, the service of MIS Japanese Americans was kept secret and as their important contributions were declassified and noted by historians, the records of their service were often incomplete or missing entirely. In typical humility, many of these veterans just shrugged it off. Shigata Ganai, 
It can't be helped. And what a shame, for their contribution to the world as we know it today deserves a special chapter in the annals of history. They helped shorten the war and they saved countless lives. It's important that we honor them as we do today. We simply can't say thank you enough. In 2000, the work of the MIS soldiers was finally recognized with a Presidential Unit Citation. And I was honored to attend the awarding of the Congressional Gold Medal to the World War II Nisei soldiers four years ago, where everyone who served in the MIS around the globe shared in that honor. Today, I'm glad to hear of General Ishimoto's efforts to appropriately recognize Dick Hamada's wartime service. And it's good to see that more of the MIS story is coming out in books and movies and now an exhibit next door at the Army Museum. I had the opportunity to visit that museum before I came here this morning. If you haven't been there, I strongly urge you to see it. It's worth the time uh, to go there. I know that some of the volunteers who helped with that exhibit are here today, including Mark Matsunaga and my staff. Thank you to everyone involved in keeping this memory alive for future generations. So ladies and gentlemen, I realize I've been up here for a while. I had an opportunity to speak at an event like this several days ago, and it was, when it was over, I asked my wife, Bruni, how I did. She quickly replied, Harry, you did great, except you missed some good opportunities to sit down. <laughs> well, I don't want to miss the opportunity to sit down today, so let me close with the following thought. While the thundering sounds of the guns of World War II ceased 70 years ago this year, our nation still draws her strength from those courageous men and women who fought for freedom in that war like those here today. And our nation continues to draw strength from those who are serving in our armed forces today and will continue to draw strength from those who serve in the future, an unbroken chain linking Americans generation to generation. Our strength as a nation also comes from loyal citizens like each of you in the audience today. Americans who are aware of our history and heritage, who are aware of our challenges and the dangers we face, and who are aware of the opportunities available to those bold enough to reach you. Those of us who serve in uniform are grateful for patriots like you who help make us what we are today, the greatest nation on earth. May God bless those who served in the MIS to defend freedom and liberty. May God bless each and every one of our soldiers and sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, past and present, who, who courageously defend our nation. May God bless this beautiful state of Hawaii, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.